All right, today we have 10 fragrances that absolutely nobody will dislike the smell of. So if you want to play it as safe as humanly possible, and you want to make sure that you're not going to offend anybody, that you're gonna get any sort of negative comments or negative feedback from your scent, this is gonna be the perfect video for you. With a little bit of a twist though, this could have been filled up with your blues and your, your very, very typical run of the mill, freshies and aquatics and there's nothing wrong with those fragrances you guys know i'm a big fan of all the big blues and the citruses and that sort of thing i went through my collection i kind of went into some of the dusty corners of it and pulled out a few things that maybe you wouldn't have thought of normally but they're really good for this so if you want something different along with still being very likable and mass pleasing then you've come to the right place now i will drop links to all of these down below so you can pick these up if you are interested also i have a mailing list you can sign up to if you want to receive the best fragrance deals to your inbox daily. Recently, we wrapped up Bond Number no. 9 New Harlem. That one came in stock 100 mil 204, retails for 360, and it's been sold out for months and finally is back. And not long after I posted that, it sold out. So it's, it's things like that that you want to stay on top of. Check the community tab often to get signed up to that mailing list, and you won't be able to uh, end up missing out on those like you may normally do. Let's get it kicked off with the new coach coach open road so for what it's worth i really like this now it has vetiver a pretty good amount of it it's got cedar wood also quite a bit there's some musk in here and uh, some bergamot lemon citrus that sort of thing up top it's nothing fancy it's nothing special this isn't the best fragrance in the world that being said now it's on discounters already that happened pretty quick you can get it for a decent price testers of this 100 mil aren't that bad and this might even be uh, yeah, it is. It's standard 100 mil. And it's just very clean, very fresh. To me, it has a little bit of an inspired by Elysium smell, the way the vetiver mixes with the citruses and the other woods going on. That's kind of how I would describe it. Not so much a clone, but definitely inspired by or similar to. Just kind of puts it in that same vein, I guess is what you would say. Ultimately, this is one that smells great. It's wearable. It's a good performer. It's versatile. It's, it's, it's just something you can't go wrong with. Next up, Prada Loam Water Splash, quite the funky bottle. So the reason why I chose this one was a couple of reasons, one of which being because it fits the criteria of this video and being that it's super mass pleasing. I don't think really anyone would smell this and hate it. And that's kind of what we're going for here. I mean, this is just so, so easy going. The other reason is you may notice that this is affordable on discounters at least comparatively speaking to the other Prada loams. You can get this big five ounce bottle for around 70, mid $70 range. And you couldn't even get a, uh, a 50 ml of the original Prada loam for that price. Usually the 50 mls are going for like 85 bucks and the, the you know 100 mils are around 100, maybe a little bit more. And so you're talking huge savings here. This is definitely the most affordable one. So if you're on a little bit of a budget, you can get a significantly larger bottle, more fragrance overall for a more affordable price and you still achieve the same thing. It has that iris uh, with neroli and then some ginger in here. It's a little bit more bright, a little bit more fresh, super easy to wear. Okay, next up, Aqua de Jo Profondo. So this one doesn't have too much dust on it. Uh, this one definitely stays in heavy rotation throughout the summertime here for me. Uh, really, I mean, I guess starting in officially spring. Uh, spring starts, what, March 20th or something like that. And generally, I'll start getting the itch around that time. And so I'll break this one out then. And typically, with a lot of these, you know, my Aqua de Jo Profumo even, I'll wear it from spring all the way up into fall until it really starts to get cold. So I get a ton of usage out of this. So this one has mineral notes, orange, aquatic notes, or sea notes, whatever. Really nice, interesting take on the aquatic DNA, and that's what I like about this one. It's not your traditional cookie cutter, run of the mill aquatic scent like you may expect from just a lot of other designer brands in particular. Also, you're probably noticing, how do you wear it so much if your bottle's full? Well, I have two bottles. This one I don't wear nearly as much, hence why it's filled up to the top, but my other one I wear very consistently. All right, next up, Bentley for Men Azure. So this is kind of probably the, the least talked about, and I don't know if you could see this or not, eh, maybe not, but there are actual dust particles floating in the air right now. The, the lights are shining on them because this bottle, well, it, it's been sitting for a while. Now this one here has violet leaf, pineapple, tangerine, very ozonic, fresh, watery, bright, citrusy, clean, fruity, 
there's just really nothing about this that I think a person could hate. And I think that's uh, something that is worth noting, you know, and this one here is affordable. You know, it's going to be in that mid $30 range on par with most Bentleys. Now you got to be careful because you could get this and you'll have great success. But if you venture over to Bentley for men, the original or the intense, or for that matter, even somewhat absolute, now you're getting into a territory where people could dislike those. So make sure you stay over here, go with either this one or Bentley for Men Black, both of which are super mass pleasing and easy to pull off. Alrighty, moving on, we have a true classic, a signature, if you would. It's Versace Signature or Versace Pour Homme, whatever you want to call it. But ultimately, it is a signature scent. One of the most pleasing men's scents to ever exist. This and the Chanel Allure Ohm Sport DNA has got to be just two of the things that are most wearable. And I guess we'll throw in Missoni Wave as well, similar to both of those. Just any of those three are, are just, I don't think a single person could hate how this smells or be disgusted or repulsed by it. Now there's going to be people, especially fragrance enthusiasts, who are, are bored by these scents and that makes sense. These are not considered revolutionary anymore. But in terms of just smelling good, I don't think this can mess up at all. I also has lemon, neroli, bergamot, a ton of musk in here. Just bright, fresh, uplifting. I mean, if you don't have a Versace Pour Homme smelling scent in your collection, you got to get one. All right, moving on, Armani Code Parfum. So a really, really nice updated version of the already highly successful Armani Code Eau de Toilette, of course. Um, you know, I think this was a, a really smart move. I think it was a great flanker. It's Armani uh, identifying a trend and jumping in on it, and that being the iris. Now, it's important to note the iris in here is nowhere near as strong as in something like Prada Lome or Dior Homme Intense or Dior Homme or, or Givenchy Gentleman Eau de Parfum or Reserve Privé or Valentino Homme Intense. All of those that you think of when you think of iris, it's not as strong in this. So it's something to be aware of. Overall, this still maintains that code freshness, but you do get bits and pieces of that iris. And, and again, the Tonka bean to a heavy extent, some cedar wood in here, even a little bit of bergamot. Ultimately, it just refreshes this DNA. It brings it back to life. It gives it a modern twist. And again, they're kind of jumping in on a trend, which personally, I really approve of. I think the iris trend is overall much more interesting than the Ambroxan trend. So before you complain too much about, oh, too much iris, look at the other trends that are still going on. And I'm looking at the blues and the Aventus clones. Alrighty, next up, Kenneth Cole Mankind Legacy. You know, good old Kenneth Cole, they don't really get a ton of love in the fragrance community. They're cheapies, you know, affordable ones, but they're actually really good, a couple of them, this being one of them. Now, this has balsam fir, amaris, and orange. So look, this is a designer brand that is at least trying to branch out using some notes that definitely aren't normally mainstream. The amaris, even the balsam fir, are notes that generally aren't used a ton uh, in terms of affordable, cheapy designers, and even a lot of expensive ones aren't, aren't really utilizing those notes. Ultimately, you get a fresh kind of creamy, aromatic smell out of this one, creaminess coming from, of course, that amorous orange combination, the balsa fur kind of giving off some woods and a masculine touch. I think it really smells good, something a little bit different, but still very wearable, very mass pleasing. And why not, we'll go with this one, Givenchy Gentleman Eau de Toilette, very important. This is the 2017 version for all of you that are maybe consuming this podcast style. You're not watching the video, but you're listening. If you're going to go out and order Gentleman Eau de Toilette and you want the one I'm referencing in this video, make sure it looks like this or it's the 2017. There's the original uh, Givenchy Gentleman out there. It's like 1974 release that you can end up buying that I bought at first on accident and I do not like it. It's very classic, okay? A lot of people would like it if you like the older style of things, but it was even too much for me. But I digress. Uh, the Gentleman Eau de Toilette 2017 here is really good. Has some of that iris, but most notable, the pear in here smells amazing. It's a nice fruity iris, some freshness going on, uh, some woods, light, light woods in here. Uh, it, it smells real nice, very uplifting, very bright. Ultimately, I see this as being the perfect spring scent when everything is starting to thaw out and come back to life. There's something just super refreshing about this one and it's so easy to pull off. Okay, next up, we're gonna go over to a designer brand that has uh, had its ups and downs for sure. and. Ultimately now, really, I don't know where they stand. They are still putting out new scents, which is cool, but some of their old ones are starting to go away. 
I don't know if they're cleaning house on most of them or if it's just a select few, but John Vervados, it's Artisan Blue. Now, uh, this one has basil, bergamot, pine, lavender, a ton of interesting notes, a lot of which I haven't even listed off here personally because I just don't know how they smell. But if you look at the note breakdown, there's some interesting ones. And uh, that's just part of what makes these cool is when you look at a lot of the note breakdowns of John Vervados fragrances, they're quite big and they're using a lot of interesting notes. And for what you get price per mil compared to quality and uniqueness, it's really a great bargain at least on some of them. Now, like I said, some of them are going away. We've lost Artisan Black, we've lost uh, Dark Rebel and Dark Rebel Rider, at least in terms of production wise, the price on both of those are going up now. You can still get them, they are expensive, so you can kind of tell they're fizzling out. I don't know what else, uh, Artisan Aqua is a limited edition and it's one of my favorites. So ultimately, the brand, while they're putting out new things, some old gems are going away too. This one's still easy to get. It's affordable and super unique for the spring and summertime. I've said this comment many times as well, really quick, but I think this could have benefited from being called artisan green because the scent itself is much more green than it would be blue or anything like that, or even aquatic. So just a little aside here, not a blue scent. And last up, Prada Luna Rosa Ocean. So I don't really consider this a blue scent either, even though it does have a blue gradient and it's called ocean, it's not even aquatic. This one has iris, no surprise, not a ton of it though, kind of uh, similar with the code, there's not a ton of iris in here, but a little bit. Bergamot, lavender, um, some other kind of a mixture of uh, some sweetness and freshness here. Ultimately with this one, really unique kind of fruity bite about it. Uh, almost kind of gives off this purpley, almost grape smell ever so slightly. Not to the level of like a Dunhill icon or something, but in that vein, just kind of off the opening. Really something a little bit different. Still going to be generic in one way or another, being that it's, it's not anything new. But at the same time, it's a new take on a familiar DNA, so to speak, or a familiar style of scent, I should say. And for that, I respect it. I was probably a little bit hard on this one at first, but after getting some more skin time with it, I really like it. And in terms of just having something that smells good to people, this one's great for that. All right, you guys, that's gonna do it for me. 10 fragrances that nobody will dislike the smell of. If you wanna play it safe, these are gonna be for you. And again, with the twist, some things in here that you maybe wouldn't have thought of or maybe you don't have already. Links will be down below. Deals will be on the community tab. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.